In the 70s and 80s, I found myself working with uh, companies um, like Procter & Gamble and, and Unilever and so on. And increasingly then, the, the stewardship agenda was about product stewardship. So not just about how do you make a safe uh, or hygienic product, but how you actually increasingly manage a range of issues through the supply chain. And now I think the stewardship agenda is jumping to a different level. So people talk about sustainability, and, and when they talk about that, concept, they mean not just uh, the sustainability of natural systems, the biosphere, but they mean social sustainability, they mean the sustainability of uh, economies and, and, and value chains and companies. And when I think of stewardship these days, I increasingly think about family-owned uh, businesses, but increasingly I think we need to engage uh, uh, with uh, uh, family-run and owned uh, companies because there may be something about the way that they manage their businesses, there may be something about the way they think about the, uh, the future that we could all learn from. When I first started to deal with business 30, 35 years ago, it was extremely difficult to get into the companies at all. Now it's rare where you don't get an invitation into the boardroom or what the Americans call the C-suite. Co companies are now open to these uh, agendas, they realize that, that, there, that there is a growing set of uh, movements that potentially can dent their brands, their reputations and so on. But they also realize if you once get into the spirit of these new movements and start to uh, uh, play into these new opportunity spaces, you can actually build your brand, you can build uh, new forms uh, of value. So often what happens is that companies change their specifications and, and suppliers think actually this is not what that uh, customer normally does, it'll probably go away, we don't have to pay attention, and then very quietly uh, they may be dropped from the um, preferred customer list. There's a new generation coming up and in a sense these sorts of issues are no longer foreign to them, they're, they're actually to some degree in their DNA, it's, it's part of who they are, their business uh, identity. So in some ways this is becoming uh, easier by the day. If you're running or involved in a family business, it's, it's always going to be complicated because you've always got the sort of intergenerational uh, politics and to some degree uh, tensions. But in some ways those go off the scale when society all around and the economy all around is starting to go through one of its periodic uh, convulsions where, where change starts to uh, accelerate. And I think we're absolutely in, in, in one of those periods. So the challenge for, for younger people in family businesses is not simply to wake up to some of these changes that are afoot and to be connected in new ways to some of the people who are driving these uh, new agendas around environment, around uh, the social agenda, human rights, whatever it happens uh, to be, but to actually bring them into the family business in a digestible way. And it cannot be that much different than trying to run a functional, normal family where the best families are the ones where you get sort of empathy across the generations, shared interests across the uh, generations. And I think it's, this has to be both ways. It can't just be the young people bringing this stuff in and forcing it through the system. It has to be uh, the somewhat older people in family businesses reaching out, uh, enabling younger people to almost go out and scout for the future and then bring that uh, back in. I think the, the, the important thing to recognize about family business, uh, and this is true of uh, most forms of business uh, today, is that this is where your customers are going, this is where your employees are going, this is where society in, 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 in general is headed. And the question is, can you be ahead of the curve and be seen to lead or are you going to have to play uh, catch up always and my instinct is that family businesses may on balance be better placed to take a leadership position than some of the very large uh, publicly listed companies have got uh, analysts and, and, and investors breathing down their necks uh, the whole time at least I hope that's going to be the case.